the next part will be the OSL here in the uh, upper part of the, the armor. Mm -hmm. You always have to keep in mind where the light source is. And in here it will be quite hidden. Uh, later on when we place the head, it's uh, really hard to see anything. But uh, you just keep in mind the light. I want the shining from the inner ring here. Ah, okay. Um, it's like a little... Yeah, there, there's just like of lights there two, two rings and uh, you could easily guess that there is the light source somewhere in here. Yeah. So we will also have some reflections in the inner ring here, mm -hmm. there. Not so much in the middle as the head is there and uh, there would no light be shining like through the head. Right. So uh, we'll focus on these areas to the sides. This is, this is a little difficult to film obviously because we are painting inside something. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, but we'll try to make the best out of it. Definitely. I think I will start with the outer ring because it's easier for you guys to see and easier for me to reach. <laughs> so, I will just add some of the flat red to the tip of my brush and try to paint it more with the side of the brush. I think I'll just change my strategy a little bit and add some uh, small white reflexes first and then glaze with red over it yeah. to, to uh, get them pop out a bit more. The underlying black just really breaks the saturation of the red. And if you put the white down, obviously you have a much nicer starting point. So a very uh, small transition to the white. Um, and you can see I highlighted not the top, but the inner, uh, the inner side of the ring. Mm -hmm. Be the edge there. Let's see what the red glaze does. <laughs> Much more saturation and vibrance in the red now. Yeah, uh, it's it's nice because the armor still looks black but with mm -hmm. the with the red sheen. I'll mix some pink with red and white to give uh, the inside now just a, a, a stronger light, and then I can glaze it down. Okay, hopefully, find a good angle. Yeah, if Ben would actually have the position that he wants right now, then uh, you would see nothing but the back of his head. <laughs> yeah, we had a, a small uh, conversation. <laughs> conversation. <laughs> no, you can't do it like this. <laughs> oh, but I want. Yeah, yeah but I guess you got all got, all know uh, that it's quite difficult to paint part like part like these, even if no one's filming you. Yeah. So um Okay, so way to the tip. And also try to hit the inner side of that ring here. Uh, so there's basically a double row of yeah, lights. Okay. Um I'm looking if the if it the light is reflecting more or less the same uh, everywhere and if I could just uh, leave it uh, in this area because it will mostly be covered with the head. Mm -hmm. um, I'll add a thin glaze because I think it's uh, still too, too um, pink. Mm -hmm. so. I will try that. Okay. Mm. And now the reflex on the upper side. Okay, now some black to pull it out to the sides. Some pink. Uh, 
and uh, rip police again. And you can actually see how the red glaze now pops on the white. It's a really nice glow effect there. Looks a little strong right now because it's still wet. It's kind yeah. Of cool. Mm -hmm. And again, it's to the side of his head, not all all the cross, because the um, face and the head will cover most of the reflection. Yes, indeed. Uh, we'll have the same light uh, reflects on the other side, mm -hmm. um, but it's not done the same way. And this, as it's quite hard to film that, I think it might do, do this part here off camera. We'll come back when that's done. <laughs> all right. It's still a little hard to see on that side, but... Uh, in reality, <laughs> it's almost as bright as here. Okay. Um, you can see I tried to pull the red a little along the inner, the inner frame. Mm -hmm. Just give a little reddish glow there as yeah. well. Basically, just put some glazes over that. Mm -hmm. We might add like a tiny glaze um, of red as well here to the side of the, the arm. Ah, okay. It's easy to overdo this, so definitely you want to make sure that your glazes are thin enough. Rather put two glazes on top uh, than one that's too strong. Yeah, indeed. But yep. yeah, like that is is enough. You yep. Don't don't go crazy. A tiny one here on the on that top part, and I think we should be done. Maybe we have to come back and retouch some of the. Uh, reflexes once the head is placed because mm. um, we were not 100% sure what we will see in the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think for now it looks pretty cool. Yeah. Normally, uh, I would as I would say 90% of uh, the miniatures I paint, I start with the face. Mm -hmm. So uh, now it's, it's a nice moment to uh, put the head in there. So, um, the head of the Horus is really uh, amazingly sculpted. It's yeah. very fine, uh, very nice details, uh, great facial expression. You can see we moved uh, quite close with the camera mm -hmm. um, to catch all the details. Because it's such a massively large part, as you can see in the comparison to Ben's fingernail. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll uh, start with the, uh, with the base flesh tone. Um, for the base flesh tone, I have something different in mind, not that natural pinkish flesh tone, because it's, mm, I think Horus should look a little bit more like unreal, a little bit more cold. Um, Undead almost. Yeah, so um, I'll add some uh, dark blue, dark sea blue, <laughs> in, the, in the mix. Um, I'm so surprised. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for, for everyone who doesn't know why we're laughing, that is like Ben's color, dark sea blue. If you take dark sea blue away, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll start with the with the base color um, that is um, half dark sea blue, half skin color. I would say, yeah. Um, just to to have a, like a, a good cold start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really cool. I think the not only the sculpting from uh, Simon Egan is, is amazing on this uh, face, but also the casting is really good, I have to say. Yeah. So the, the task here is uh, we have to paint a face that has like two light sources. Uh, one from underneath with the red and uh, the natural light source from above. Mm -hmm. So I will first um, paint the natural light source from above and then the... Uh, red and glaze it in afterwards right now you're just making like a real rough coverage of the uh, base yeah. color and you'll do like two or three layers of that right indeed um so um as it's 
not really anything special. I might also finish that off cam, the, yeah. the base color, and we'll be back once the base color is set. Mm -hmm. We're back with the base color. Now you can really appreciate the level of detail that's sculpted there. Yeah. It's insane. For the next step, we'll um, add the natural highlights. I will mix some more flesh color to our base mix to get the uh, upper part uh, look a little bit more saturated. Mm -hmm. That's a glaze consistency or is it a little thicker? A little thicker. Okay. Um, I will add a little bit white to make a, a more dramatic transition that you can really see. You're focusing on the areas that would uh, natu naturally catch the light from above right now, right? Yeah. So it's the, the bridge of the nose, under the eyes. I think it's quite nice to see the both uh, sides of the face uh, in direct comparison. One without any painted highlights on, this one is a lot more dramatic. Mm -hmm. I will continue with small highlights on the nose. For a face like that, you really just need a tiny amount of uh, highlight color in the brush. A little bit of the base tone to soften out. Yeah, just leaving a pure white would be a little too much, right? Yeah. Tiny reflexes on the red wrinkle here. A bit too big. Base color. Yeah, it's amazing how much uh, character the face already has and when you really work on all of the detail that's sculpted how much character actually will receive from the paint job as well yeah i want the eyes to be um, black i think that that will be very creepy to have like really black eyes i will paint those now so i can uh, correct them with the eyelids mm -hmm. You, you see I messed it up <laughs> uh, one eye is like really huge and the other one is quite okay um, but as I said it's good to do them now so yeah. we can we can correct it um, tainted by chaos <laughs> that's what happens <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, I just want to make sure I actually paint the eye, mm -hmm. the whole eye black, and then I can correct it. Yeah, that side looks almost perfect, doesn't it? Yeah. So yeah, mine, mine would be the same on both sides. <laughs> I will add a light reflex on the eyelid as well. That is such an important part of the of the eye is just having a light reflex on the eyelid, right? Yeah. I'm kind of afraid to put the light reflex uh, on the eyes, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> well, there's no way around it. <laughs> don't you think we could just uh, Photoshop it later? Yeah, but psst, don't tell the people. <laughs> Let's go for some straight away. Again, one was good, one was too big, but this time the other way around. <laughs> so, some black. <laughs> Life of a painter. <laughs> uh, I will continue with the highlights, uh, especially on the cheek and the, f the, the forehead. Mm -hmm. And... Um, then afterwards, a tiny bit of shadows, and then we're doing the, the red glazes. Also need a small light reflex here in that wrinkle. And some base color. to kind of blend it in and yeah. soften that again. And that's actually um, not really that hard, even though it's so small, right? Especially because it's not not hard because it's not uh, because it's so small. Yeah, yeah, it's quite easy to get and get like a small, nice transition. Yeah. just one glaze. I don't know what that line, what you're working right now is called in the, in English, but it's really important to um, detail that. It uh, just creates a really strong impression, like a really strong forehead. This year? Yeah. yeah. Is it the temple? It's not the temple, is it? I'm not sure. So if you know, leave it in the comments. <laughs> so there's some... Help us to help you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, I don't want the, the back of the head to be... Uh, as bright as the front because this one will be covered with the with the armor later mm -hmm. <clears throat> but we need more light on the top of the head and now you can also see how the flesh tones come back in yeah. Espe especially on those raised parts that's what you wanted that's what you went for right mm -hmm. yeah so so you have that six skin color underneath and uh, that Elements that are touched by the by the daylight are look more natural. Mm -hmm. It'll also work very well with the the rest of the miniature because uh, if you remember the gold we painted is also very desaturated. Um, there's some green in there, uh, more like a 
a little coldish if you want. Yeah. Um, plus, we also have some um, some blue in the in the black armor, so mm -hmm. that will also and make in it. the wolf. Yes, <laughs> blue is everywhere. <laughs> You can see how he goes back and forth. He glazes the um, skin color, and then when maybe some of the highlights are lost, goes back on with a, the with a white. So it's a little bit back and forth kind of painting now. Yeah. I think painting is often forwards and backwards till, you, till you're really happy with the results. I know the backward part already. <laughs> <laughs> No, I laughed. No, I have like a way too bright highlight here on the forehead. <laughs> the third eye. <laughs> but I think it's important. I mean, everybody makes mistakes, and uh, like really, everybody makes mistakes, and just being able to. Uh, and I've correct them is probably one of the skills you'll pick up with a lot of practice. Yeah, but do you see what that just very small glaze of the of the original tone made made that strong highlight disappear? Mm -hmm. I think we'll add some shadows as well, and then uh, we should be ready for the red. Right. Yeah, the back of the head and everything. I don't think we're gonna show all of that or no and it's really uh 90 percent hidden so we don't yeah. need to spend a lot of time to that that will all be more or less covered in the shadow color okay i think um uh, i will just quickly um cover the the cables with a black off cam and so we have like a good frame to start with okay we're back the cables are black you can see you just glaze a little on the lower side of the hat as well in the dark color and we'll right now go for some some shadows and after that, the uh, red highlights. Mm -hmm. So um, I've added a tiny bit of um, hull red to the palette. It's a dark red brown tone. It's a tank foundation, isn't it? Hull red. It's a how is it going? It's from Model Air. Mm -hmm. uh, I've mixed it with some dark sea blue to get it not as as bright as it, it is before, not as red, but more like a, in interesting neutral color uh, I'll try to hit the lower side here Now people are always uh, surprised at how strong the shadows are in miniature painting, but you kind of have to exaggerate because of the scale, right? Yeah. Also, if you um, if you look at the figure, and when you have have the hat, um, the figure is so strong in contrast mm -hmm. that you really also need need more shadows and more contrast on mm -hmm. the figure, so it matches the whole thing. More hollow red in there. In the in the ears, and it's really difficult, isn't it? Yeah, it's really turning on the spot quite literally. I'm putting the brush all the way down. I just placed a very slight amount of um, glazed shadow color, clean the brush and feathering it out. Mm -hmm. I know I just repeated what you said, but it's so important. <laughs> so a tiny bit to the side of the nose. Mm -hmm.
And here again, it's really crucial to use glazes, uh, really thin. If it's too strong, then basically you'll have to do all the underlying work again. And rather do it twice than just do it once and it's ruined. Definitely. Also, by using thin layers, you, you have um, a little bit more freedom to adjust it bit by bit mm. than uh, just doing it at the first try. So, like these sheets here, for example, the shadows need to be the same intensity on both sides. So, mm. by just using it very thinly, you can build it up slowly. And maybe not so much on this uh, face right now, but also on other miniatures. Um, oftentimes you're using different color glazes as well, just to um, imitate the different uh, colors of a skin. And it's kind of the same thing. You don't want to put like a bright red, <laughs> opaque color on there when you can do it with a, with a glaze. Yeah, definitely. You can also see how it frames the whole face, makes it even stronger and yeah, also the combination of, of the blue and red helps to to um, uh, really see the volumes better. Mm -hmm. I think we'll uh, just finish that step of the shadow on the whole head and mm -hmm. uh, we're back for the red light. All right. You can see I finished the, the shadow part. The back of the head is quite rough, but as I said, we'll be in the hour anyway. Uh, you can see I also added like a tiny highlight here on the uh, veins that you see on on his head. And those are actually sculpted, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's quite the same. Now the creepy part, we have to, to add the, the red light. Um, and as I'm quite happy with the face, uh, I hope everything goes uh, goes uh, goes well. <laughs> goes well, right on spot. Yeah. yeah. We'll take some some red and start with the uh, most obvious part, like the uh, the lower side of the the chin, mm -hmm. because that definitely catches most of the light. Yeah. Place it and feather it a bit to the sides. The good thing is, uh, you don't see it that much from from the like when you hold the head in the right angle. Here it's quite strong, but not too strong. And now I want a soft transition to the upper side. Mm -hmm. See how careful Ben is in uh, not touching too much of that area right now because that red will just be visible. Yes, very visible because the, the red is uh, quite strong. Plus contrast to the blue. Yeah. Okay, but so far I'd say it's at least not completely messed up. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I definitely want to encourage you in what you're doing. <laughs> So we have some tiny wrinkles here. Try to just give them a slight red tint. So really it's the opposite of what you did in the very beginning when you tried to catch uh, all of the areas that catch the light from above. Yeah. Now you're trying to catch uh, all the areas that get the light from below and maybe a little bit from the front. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, definitely um, under the nose. We would also have some. I don't want him to look like Santa Claus, so Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. So just a little bit here. Yeah, with all this uh, armor, looks a little bit like he is uh, is wearing too much makeup. But um, as soon as everything is uh, put together, yeah, I think it'll make a lot of sense. 
Yeah, I think the, the effect will be quite good when you see him like in, in that position. The the red is uh, just really focused on on that lower areas. Yeah, and that's actually a good way to check which areas you should touch yeah. at angle. So I'll continue like that on the other side. Um, but I think I'll do it off cam and we'll be back once that is completed. All right. As you can see, this side also got the right gloss to it. Yeah. Put it under the eyes as well. Yeah, there as well. Yeah. It's still very subtle, isn't it? Yeah, it's not like uh, super glowy everywhere, like like a human torch, but uh, <laughs> I think it will work really nice uh, with the uh, with the whole figure. Mm -hmm. I will glue it in, and uh, we will have a look if we need to do some small readjustment. Will you do any work on the cables at all, or just, um, like just some very tiny highlights? I uh, just put a little bit on, of, of red underneath. Yeah. So maybe just some very small white highlights. Okay. Put a little bit of uh, dark sea blue to the brush. Some white on the tip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very simple. So yeah, that should be good. We'll, we'll be back with the assemble it? assembled miniature, right? Okay, cool. So we have to admit that we took about spent about five minutes just looking at the <laughs> miniature a moment ago. Uh, we are both uh, really happy with the result. Yeah. Um, it's always uh, good to see that when you have a color concept in your mind and you're like, okay, I'll add blue to the skin color and, and it turns out like that, like that, it's really good. We wanted the head to be the, the um, center point of uh, focus, yeah. which it definitely is now. The, uh, the direction of that was also something we considered. We kind of tested it, how it looked on the base and we decided, uh, or you decided to um, kind of have him look at his mace yeah, so, so like, like he's he's pointing in a in a direction, and yeah. also the the uh, where he's standing on the base also uh, emphasizes that direction. Yeah, we will also attach the uh, the um, the cloak, mm -hmm. and um, and the cloak will be the final part that we need to paint, right? Yes. All right. So let's look at this one more time. Oh. Ah. All right. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we'll All right. See you for the cloak. Okay. Bye bye. Those elements here are quite dark. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So that will be the next part. Okay. So we'll finish um, all of the black parts of the leg. Uh, off camera now. Any other black parts you want to finish off cam? I think there's not much left, right? No, I think that that should be good. Yeah. On uh, the back, we'll have the uh, the cloak, anyways. Yeah, and the top part here, we will do that together with the face. Okay. Um, so I think that should be good for now for the black parts. All right.